All right, here we go for another lesson. Uh, this one, Exponential Growth and Decay, Modeling Data. Um, for this one, I'm gonna skip over the kickoff. Uh, you guys can let me know, would you rather have me do the kickoff like we do normally in class, or because we're doing um, online here that we can just skip that. Um, but uh, let me know there. So getting into exponential growth and decay. A lot of times this is the stuff uh, that can model like what's going on with the coronavirus, how the cases are an exponential growth model that they follow. This is uh, that math on how they determine how that's all gonna go. Uh, a lot of times they do that with bacterias, with viruses, uh, they can do that with populations, um, you know, how things are gonna go. They can also do that with, and we're gonna get into it, uh, with say carbon dating where they're trying to find how old something is that's all with growth and decay models that we're going to be doing here so a uh, mathematical model for exponential growth and decay is f of t equals a naught e raised to the kt or in other words a equals a naught e raised to the kt that a is going to be the amount uh, that you have so A with the little zero, that A naught is the original amount. T then is your time, K is your constant. Uh, that's either gonna represent growth or decay. If K is bigger than zero, so if it's positive, it's gonna be growth. And if K is negative, then it's gonna be decay. It's gonna be getting smaller. So these are what the graphs look like of these two. Uh, your exponential growth going to be kind of flatter and then it's going to curve and go higher and higher. Uh, with decay, we're going the other way. We're going to go down and we're going to try to flatten out and get close to zero as we can. So, in 1970, the U.S. population was 203.3 million people. And by 2003, it had grown to 294 million people. Now, we're a lot bigger than that right now. Um, but let's find that exponential growth model that will um, that will model that data. So if we start with um, our A naught. A naught is going to be the original amount of people that we're starting with. Well, we're going to start with 1970s here population of 2003. So that's going to be A naught. The 203.3. Uh, we also need our um, our T, our time. Well, if we want to know in 2003, it's 294. Because, again, we're looking for our growth rate. Our time would be 2003 minus 1970, which would be 33. And then lastly, well, what's our A? Well, what's our ending amount? Well, we want to get to... And 2003 was 294, so that's going to be our A. So when we set up our equation, our A, which we're using A equals A naught E to the KT. So 294 equals 203.3 E raised to the K times 33. So, we're going to solve for K now. Divide by your 203.3. So, just like before, we're going to leave this as a um, as a fraction. So, this cancels. And we're going to have 294 over 203.3 equaling e to the 33k. We'll go that route. So we get rid of our e's. Think back to the last lesson. We did natural log of them. Natural log and that cancels. So we're to the natural log of 294 over 203.3 equaling 33k. And to get our K then, we would divide by 33. 
So k would equal the natural log of 294 over 203.3 over 33. And if you solve that out, k ends up being about 0 0.011. So if we go back up here, part B says, by which year will the population reach 315 million? So that's going to become our new A. So we're going to have 315 equals, we're still going to go back to that 203.3, original A naught. E, although our K now we know is 0 0.011, but this time we're looking for T. We're looking for what time will this happen. Solve it the same way. Divide our 203.3. So 315 over 203.3 is going to equal e to the 0.011t. Get rid of our e, divide by ln, or not divide, but take the, the ln of each side, the natural log. Those cancel out. So the natural log of 315 over 203.3 then equals 0.011t. So we're going to divide by that. So t in this case would equal, if you divide that out in your calculator, so we would do 2.0 wait, where am I going with that? I'm moving off the screen. So natural log of 315, which we could, let me delete this out. Again, if you hit alpha y equals, that'll take you to the fraction fu function. Then you just do that first one. So 315 over 203.3. Arrow to the right, put in your parentheses, divide by 0 0.011. And you end up with 39.8, so let's call this about 40 years. So, 1970 plus your 40 would give you the year 2010. So, 10 years ago was when we should have, according to this population uh, equation, should have hit 315 million. Now, if you want to Google that, go for it. So, that's how these will solve out. Um, and it's kind of going to be the same, same sort of theme um, as we go through. So, kind of alluded to this already, but uh, half-life. Half-life is the time that takes for half a given substance to disintegrate, so to decay away. So this is what they use to, say, carbon date. So in this case, carbonating the dates, Dead Sea Scrolls. So use the fact that after 5,715 years, a given amount of carbon-14 will have decayed to half the original amount to find the exponential decay model for carbon-14. So that's how long it's going to take to get half the amount. So in this case, well, what's our A not? Well, original amount would be, well, the original amount, our A not. So that's just it. What would A be though, is we want to be half of what A naught is. So A naught over two is what we're going to use there. Because we want to have half the original amount. Um, and as far as time goes, well, time was 5,715 years. So we can make our equation. Our A is going to be A naught over two equaling a naught. E then raised to the kt. Well, we don't know k, so k times 5715. Now we solve. Well, if we divide by a naught, this is going to cancel out. It's also going to cancel out over here. So that left side, we're just going to have 1 half equals e to the 5715k. 
Again, get rid of your E by taking the LN on both sides. So E and LN cancel each other out here. So LN natural log of one half is going to be equal to 5,715K. So divide by 5,715. So LN alpha y equals if that first option gives you the fraction of 1 divide 2 close your parentheses divide by 5715 and we get a really really small number so k is going to end up being and if you notice it's a negative here so it's negative 0 0.000, 000 one two one is what it ends up being so if you get this e to the negative four that means we'd move it four to the left so once twice three four times we're gonna have three zeros in the front so that gets our, our k part b then says in 1947 the earthware jars containing what are known as the dead sea scrolls were found by an arab bedouin herdsman i probably butchered that and i'm sorry uh, analysis indicated that the scroll wrappings were contained 76% uh, of their original carbon-14. Estimate the age of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So, yeah, we're trying to find age, so we're looking for time. We're going to set the rest of this all up the same way, except what we have now is our 76%. So it won't be half, where it's divided by 2. We're going to have 0 0.76. We're going to make that decimal a naught as our amount. Original amount, still a naught, because we don't know what it really was, but we know that right now we have 76% of it. We have E raised to the K, which is negative 0.000121 T. And now we solve. So get rid of your a naught first, which is going to cancel on both sides. So 0 0.76 equals E to negative 0.000121 T. To the natural log of both sides so we can cancel out with our e so the natural log of 0 0.76 would equal negative 0 0.000121 t we're going to divide by that negative 0 0.000121 cancel on that side t then will end up being well, it's about 2,268 years old. Now keep in mind, this is in 1947. So by now it's even older than that. So, well, if we take 2020 minus 1947, 2020 minus 1947. You end up with 73. So that we really we could add that on. 22268 plus 73. Oops, too far. 68. And so at this point we are 2341 years old with those dead skis. Dead Sea Scrolls. So, carbon dating, kind of how that's going to work. Um, it's kind of cool when you start getting into it. So, next we have our logistic growth model, uh, where A, B, and C are all constants, so that'll be something going on with the problem, where it may say, hey, this is... Um, X amount, this year is X amount, this is X amount. This all fits together, find how long it'll take to do that, which is our T or time. But here, logistic growth model, so as things develop, how is it going to grow? Now, they're going to give you it, like this one here, where F of T, our function, is 30,000 over 1 plus 20 E raised to the negative 1.5 T. 
which is the number of people who have become ill with influenza T weeks after its initial outbreak in a town of 30,000 inhabitants. So this kind of really deals with what's going on with the coronavirus right now. They're using models like this to kind of determine, okay, how fast are things growing? Uh, what should we expect going forward? Now, does that always happen exactly? No, but it gives them a way to estimate what's going to, all going to go on. So, uh, when you look at this, how many people became ill with the flu when the ep epidemic began? Well, at what time would the epidemic be begun? Well, at time zero. So, if we put zero in for T, for part A, that will allow us to find what our original amount was. So, if we do F of zero, 30,000 over 1 plus 20 e to the negative 1.5 times zero. Well, right off the bat, anything times zero is zero, and anything to the zero power is just going to be one. 20 times one is still 20, so we're going to end up with is 30,000 over 1 plus 20, which would be 21. So again, 0 times anything is 0. Anything to the 0 power is just going to be 1. And it's because these are multiplied, 1 times 20 gives us our 20. 20 plus 1 is 21. Now, if you divide that out, you're going to end up with about 1429. So 1,429 people. So at that point, they called it an epidemic. So that's technically our time zero. So it got to that many people before they declared an epidemic. Kind of like what happened in our world uh, this last few weeks. Once it reached a certain number, they were able to call it a pandemic with the influ or with the coronavirus. And uh, that really has shifted a lot in our world right now. Um, how many people were ill by the end of the fourth week? So for part B... T now is 4. So again, we set it up F of 4 equals, well, it's still our 30,000 over 1 plus 20 e to the negative 1.5, but now our, instead of 0, we have a 4 here. So let's put it into our calculator. So we're going to have 30,000 divide, I want to put this in parentheses, 1 plus 20, to get to E it's second LN, and our value is negative 1.5 times 4 in that top. And then we can close this, and we're going to end up with about 28 1,583 people. Okay. Lastly, what's the limiting size of the population that becomes ill? Well, what's the most amount of people that could get sick? Well, the population of the town. So C is pretty simple. It's just 30,000 people. Because you can't have more people than what's there to get sick. Just like everyone in the world could get the coronavirus, we can't get any more than that. We're limited by the amount of population that's there. So, another place where this can get used is with Newton's Law of Cooling. So, this is something that you can look at every day. When you're taking stuff in and out of, or out of the ovens, well, how long is it going to take to cool down to where you could eat it? You know, different, different, uh, different aspects to that. So the temperature T of a heated object at time T is given by T equals C plus T naught minus C times E raised to the KT. C is that constant temperature of the surrounding medium. So think the air of the, or the temperature of the air. C then, or that was C. T naught is the initial temperature of the heated object. K is that negative constant because it's going to be cooling, so it's going to be a de uh, decay type model uh, that's associated with the cooling object. So we have 
cake being removed from the oven as a temperature of 210 degrees. So in the oven, it got warmed up to that point by the time it was done and taken out. It's going to then get sit in a room that has a temperature of 70 degrees, so at room temperature. After 30 minutes, the temperature of the cake is 140 degrees. So first we're going to use Newton's Law of Cooling to find the model for the temperature of the cake T after T minutes. So, well, what is T? Well, we know after 30 minutes it's going to be 140. Initial temperature was when we took it out of the oven, which was 210. And then our K, we don't know, but we know our T is going to be 30 minutes. So, T is 30. So now let's set it up. So, 140 equals um, our surrounding, oh, I forgot, C is going to be 70, because that's our surrounding temperature. So, 70 plus T naught of 210 minus 70. E raised to the K, which we don't know, T, which is 30. And now we solve. 210 minus 70, it's going to be 140. We're going to then subtract the 70 over so that we can get rid of that. 140 minus 70 is 70. We have 140 e to the 30 k. Divide by your 140 to begin with. Well, it's 70 over 140. It's one half. We still have e to the 30 k on this side. Again, to get rid of e, we take both sides, the ln of both sides. So we are left with the ln of 1 half equaling 30k. So if we divide by 30, k with an equal. So ln second alpha 1 over 2. Close it out. Divide by 30. And we get a negative 0.2031. And we're going to go at least three, we're going to, we'll do three decimals for this one, just to make sure we have plenty of that there, or actually to the fourth, I guess. So negative 0 0.0231 is going to be our K. So that's part A. Part B there says, what is the temperature of the cake after 40 minutes? So what we did here was all part A. So now into part B. So now we have our time of 40, we know our growth rate, we're trying to find what is our final temperature, our T. So T would equal our initial, or no, our C, which is 70, plus our initial temperature of 210 minus our 70, which we already know is going to be 140, E to the point negative, or negative point zero two three one times 40. So, put her in here. 70 plus 140 second ln to get E to the negative point zero two three one times 40. So 125.56. So we'll call it about 126 degrees. We'll round that up. And lastly, we have part C here. That says, when will the temperature of the cake be 90 degrees Fahrenheit? So now we have our K. We're going to look for our T. So our final then is 90. So 90 equals 70 plus our 210 minus 70, which again we know is 140 e to the negative point zero two three one t so subtract 70 20 would equal then 140 e to the negative point zero two three one t divide by 140 
20 divided by 140 would be 1 7th. e to the negative 0 0.0231t ln both sides, the natural log. That can cancel. And then we're going to divide by negative 0 0.0231 to get down to just t. When we do the one side, we have to do the other. So in this case, t is going to equal. So we would do uh, ln of alpha y equals to get that fraction 1 over 7 close that out divide by negative 0 0.0231 and so it'll be about 84 minutes so have to wait a little bit before you can have your cake in this case so if you're ever baking which you can do plenty over break here you can always figure out how long is it going to take to cool down uh, last couple things here so with this we can observe patterns and scatter plots and create different functions to model that data um, now we're not going to get into this so much because it involves these graphing calculators. I know you don't have or all have these graphing calculators. So that could be something we can do once we get back in school, if we ever get back there. Um, but for now, just know uh, these are options. So you can kind of see how things are going here. If it's on the top curving up sort of a thing, it's going to be exponential, but it's going to be a growth. If it's curving down and staying above the x-axis, or exponential, but it's dk. Logarithmic would look like this. If it is um, positive sort of a thing with natural logs, I guess. I take that back. Um, and here, if that b, if your base is negative, or less than zero negative, it's going to be curving that way. So the figure shows a percent of U.S. households with televisions that subscribe to cable. The data data is displayed for five selected years from 1980 to 2002. A scatter plot is shown. What function would be a good choice for modeling the data? Well, if we're looking at this, these are starting flat, curving up, or curving down, flattening out. With exponential, or not with exponential, with logarithmic, we're sharply going up or down, and then we're flattening out. Same thing here. So to me, what's kind of showing this is it's curving up, flattening out, we're going to go with logarithmic. That's all you're going to have to put, it's just logarithmic. So, as I was kind of referring to, you can use your graphing calculator to find those equations for what would model that, uh, which involve the LIN reg, LN reg. Um, that'll give you your natural log or logarithmic um, equation then to use. Um, now in this case, keep in mind if you use those points, you put them all in, you're going from the years after 1979, so 1 would be the year 1980. So you got to keep in mind, okay, well, what X are we at? That's the number of years after 1979. Um a lot of the times they will use this model of y equals a b to the x as another way to represent it. Um, how you can also do this is with e's where it's a e raised to the ln of b x. I know ln and b's cancel out, but however it is ln of b that uh, you would do first and then that would work out. So you can keep this here for now because it's times an x. Or not the whole thing is taking the natural log of it. So, uh, for this, um, exponential function y equals 2.557 times 1.017x models the world's population y in billions x years after 1949. If we write it in terms of e, we're going to take this here and we're going to write it as this over here. So, y equals our a so our a is this 2.557 
which will not change. What will change is that b raised to the x is going to become e ln of 1.017x. And we'll leave it at that. So that is the rest of this lesson. Um, this is also the end of the chapter. Um, so we will get into the next chapter, the next lessons that we get into. Um, and we'll go from there. So do your homework. Make sure you do those numbers there. Um, I forgot to mention on the last video. Um, if you want to submit it, take the picture of your homework and submit it online. You can do that. Otherwise, if you just want to save it and send it with whoever is going to pick up your uh, notes and stuff from the grab bag, you can always drop them off in my bag as well, and I can get your homework that way. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, we'll see you guys later.